this is nutty. Okay, it's more more uh, Bannon's war room, right? This guy Dave Bratt, uh, with a uh, way too many founding fathers pictures behind him. It's a little creepy. I think that's the Last Supper, and then the signing of the Declaration. Like this dude thinks he owns these moments because he's got a fucking picture of him. No family photos. That's weird. Um, Dave Bratt. Trump is a return to normalcy. Can you imagine if Trump was your fucking normal? Imagine normal for you is a man who talks about whether his wife, it. it his new baby will have his wife's tits and his, uh, and said he already she already has her legs you know what i mean like that that kind of normal if normal is like voting for a dude who partied with jeffrey epstein for two goddamn decades that's normal wearing a diaper just fucking doesn't brush his teeth just gets him his fucking veneers changed every 18 months that's normal. That's what it is. Yes, happy normal. That's exactly right, Mark. Um, uh, so this is uh, this. I don't know how he's going to square this circle, but let's find out. Uh, yeah, and we're not going to do this whole video because nobody needs it. Brett, you're you're. Why well, it just calls him that right out of the gate? Your your thoughts about all this? The, the, the and this month is is going to be insane. You got impeachment hearings, Fauci hearings, uh, a New Hampshire, Iowa. Taiwan elections, uh, all the fights of President Trump in, in the Manhattan courtrooms to strip him of everything, uh, and also all the fights on immunity, 14th Amendment, all of it, sir. So January starts off with a bang like we haven't seen before. Your thoughts, Brother Brat? Brother Brat. <laughs> yeah. Can't remember his first name. Well, I think the people on the war room know all the major themes uh, that, that I would bring up. Uh, yeah, most of them are like Christian or Egyptian or, or, or I, I don't know, is that Aristotle or has just got Plato up there or whatever? Uh, yeah, it's hard to tell from the picture or whatever. Um, the, the, I don't know, the way, this is the signing of the declaration. I don't know what the fuck that is over there. The stabbing of Caesar, I don't know. A couple that stick out was the ouster of the Speaker McCarthy. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, I'd say that sticks out. Uh, for... Uh no reason at all forging a deal with the white house just an appeasement total appeasement with the white house on the and then mike johnson doing the exact same deal budget they they the, the white house wanted seven trillion and uh the republicans caved and gave them that and so uh, that that was a major move and now with the new speaker uh that's uh 2024 is going to be hold, dictated hold, by whether he holds hold, strong hold, hold. don't on don't hang issues. on hang on yeah. hang on don't 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 bury the lead yeah. McCarthy gave him an extra year. It was bad. Yeah. We yeah. we didn't love the first deal, but we were prepared to accept it as team players. Right. He added. Is that what you are? You guys are team players now. Why would you be team players during the total destruction of America? Right. Understand what they're accusing Biden of all the time. And how lamely they do it. And then go, these guys are like, yeah, but we'll be team players. How would you be a team player if you actually believe that shit? Another year and took off the cap, took off the cap on the deficits. Yeah. You're going to have, you know, we already. That's because it was a losing fight for you fuckers. And you knew it. If they, they knew if they, if they, like, if, if they shut the government down or didn't, you know, if they held the debt ceiling where it was, if they refused to raise it. They would crash the economy, and it would be on them, and they know it. They weren't being team players. They knew it was all, it was all on them, and that was that. They were like, I'm not, not going to take that shit. Fuck you. We have over $34 trillion. This is why McCarthy's gone, and this is the original sin of really this Congress that they've yep. already had a, you know, uh, it, it, they're back next week uh, on Tuesday, I think, and right in front of us is the CR. And as I say, and I think you agree with me, shut down the border or shut down the government. Yeah. We got to stop playing. Yeah. You do realize if you shut down the government, the border is even more open because the, the, the processing of people goes away and, and it just makes it easier for people to get through. What, what, what the fuck? You think it's like the walls in the Death Star or the doors in the Death Star, they just shrunk, they just close? When you stop the government from working, a nice, a nice, a nice. The government is the border. 
The purpose of a border is because you have a way of living inside an area that other people don't. They either disagree with it or they haven't built their own version of it yet, whatever the other country's reason. And the only reason you have a border is because you have a standard that your citizenry lives by and other people don't. If you stop by living by that standard, your border ceases to exist anyway. And that's going to make January one of the most intense months in modern American political yeah. history with yes and I'm already bored seven or eight events that would be number one in themselves all jammed together yeah it's almost like the legacy of Donald Trump is a bunch of horseshit yeah. in in one sir yeah the other the other uh point uh, that you bring up but I, that I think symbolically is huge is the yeah symbolically yeah excellent excellent totally the ouster of Tucker Carlson from Fox News that reveals so much in so many. It does, yeah. I I've been saying I've been talking shit about Fox News for a long time, but I even I didn't realize. Many ways, and the FBI and the CIA and the intelligence organizations are not going to be happy campers uh, this year uh, because Tucker is on a roll along with your show and others who are now exposing the new logic, and it is not pretty. The new logic. Uh, Tucker's hinting and, uh, you know, the Fox reporter now is hinting, you know, they're training us in to get ready for dire outcomes. And Obama writes a movie about an EMP attack and losing electricity next November or something like that. Something like that. I don't remember. I was like, I was, I don't, I don't really have Disney plus. So it's something like that though. Right. Yeah, does anybody know? Implied uh, that's uh, crazy land, uh, but now is in our, uh, is in our mental models. Yeah, that's what it is. That's they're not movies. They're mental models. <sighs> Look, I I realize that uh, I was being programmed when I watched E.T. by Steven Spielberg to hate my government. Because the, it was the government guys that came with guns to take E.T. and they just let him die. The evil government people showed up with their guns and everything because they were worried about some, I don't know, that he might bring a pathogen from outer space, not realizing that he can heal just by his own finger so he could just touch everybody on Earth that he gave space flu to, I guess, you know. Shit, he'd probably do it without even touching him. He could probably just, uh, turn on your hot light. Let it shine wherever you go. And so all that to say, I, I think the, the good news is, you know, and I, I went into modern art and all the devastating decay, uh, but the 24. What? All right. I don't know what the, maybe he, this is something you talked about earlier. I, I honest to God think that there's going to be a return to the faith. There's going to be a national transformation going on along the lines of the truth. And the oh, fuck. This is the same thing Lindell says. This is like the greatest revival for Jesus Christ that's ever been had. Meanwhile, what do you mean? You're just going to fucking crowbar people like Jesus back into schools because your churches suck at teaching the gospel? Let's just, uh, let's just get this out in the open. Let's just stop fucking around. Your churches suck at teaching the gospel. That's why you want it in the schools. That's why you want fucking Ten Commandments in front of the the I don't know the Supreme Court or in front of courthouses in in your states or whatever. It's because your churches suck at teaching the gospel. For the record, beautiful and the good, and I think people are looking for a new mental model, and that. Yeah, and I got to what, and, and what they mean is a movie. And, you know, I know you got a lot of that Seinfeld money, Steve. So if you could invest in my movie that I want to do, it's like, it's like The Last Supper meets the signing of the Declaration of Independence, but it takes place during Plato's time. Um, when, uh, and, and the Kraken, the Kraken is the star. And you're just making this up by looking at the paintings like, like Kaiser Soze, aren't you? No. No. Mental model is the mental model of the Judeo-Christian truth. Say mental model again, motherfucker. Say mental model again. Tradition, which they know, they intuitively have it in them, 
and it's it, it speaks of greatness, right? And I, the the high renaissance uh, was captured by three great artists, and this is not subjective. They no, it isn't diet. No, you're right. You're right. This is all rock solid. There's, I mean, there's no flexibility in the interpretation of any. Of the, what the fuck are you talking about? They were great, and greatness is is being buried right now. Whether well, it totally is. It's greatness is being bare. It totally is. I mean, under bad news, I would say like passing an infrastructure bill, all the Biden bridges, Biden's building bridges and it's getting buried. Look at all the bees in that. Uh, say a B word again, motherfucker. Say a B word. All right. Ain't no berry. I, I look at my my uh, room here. What do I got? Yes, we get it. You, you're using imagery and iconography to uh, hide your hollow intellect. Yeah, that's that's how assholes do it. It, it. I mean, I guess if you don't have any diplomas worth a fuck. Out here, you know, play around with my camera. Up here, I got uh, Raphael's School of Athens uh, depicting human reason from the Greeks. That is the irony. So these are all your ironic pictures. Greatness. All three of these guys hated each other, by the way. So get your kids to study this. Down below, right uh, next to me, is the Lord. Is the Pez dispenser of uh, um. Of San of the eagle, uh, the 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 eagle. This guy right here. It's right. I mean, it's right there. It is a Pez dispenser, right? It's not one that. It's not doesn't give you like those raisinets, right? It looks like he's pooping. Lord's Supper by Da Vinci. He oh, that's what that is. I would, you know, I should have read the Da Vinci Code. I probably would have spotted that right away. Captures Jesus Christ. The, these are the major themes. Behind me is the fountain. Yeah, we get. You have themes. It's yeah. It's I, I understand. You're, you're a shallow puddle of a man. Behind me is uh, the Bodleian Library at Oxford University. And then right up there is Michelangelo's Moses, right? So I try to surround myself with these things, you know, and us Protestant Presbyterians, we torched all your Catholic art. We repent for that. Sorry about that. Uh, but these are markers toward the transcendent, toward true greatness, and something that you're never going to experience. Um, and you st and with all that around you, you still have that haircut. Yeah? You still you still going with short hair. You have all all those symbols of greatness around you, all of them flowing locks and you're still going to get a still going to cut your hair short, are you? So it just means nothing. Maybe the transcendence and long hair, maybe they're aligned. <laughs> Alan Bloom called, wrote a book called Closing the American Mind. He mocked, you know, the underlings who are just studying the 60s radical stuff. But after a point in time, after you studied the pantheon of... Bored. I'm bored. I, like, I, I, honest to God. Like, I I don't know what the fuck this asshole's on about. And I thought, you know, if you're talking... The world's going to fucking end. You have... You actually have time to whinge about this shit. Right? I... Uh, Again, it's like fucking Alex Jones's goddamn watch. You have time if you have time to yammer on about shit like this, your world is not bad. I'm sorry. It just isn't. Uh, if that's if anything, that's what privilege is. Yeah. Privilege ultimately, I believe, is ingratitude. Tons of people can have it. Everybody's capable of it. But these guys are particularly whiny about it.